Hello, welcome to the Closure Cones walkthrough. Um, on Hacker News, you might have seen about the uh, Closure Cones, a good way to learn closure, walking you through all kinds of aspects of the language. And, you know, a lot of people probably read that, take a look at it, but they might not actually go through it, even though they're interested in the language. So, for those kind of people who are interested in it but not doing it themselves for whatever reason I thought I'd create a video walking through it and exploring uh, these cones a bit uh, maybe giving a few extra tips along the way and it might be beneficial um, so let's begin one thing though I'm going to do this a little bit differently rather than follow the directions that they have here what I'd like to do is just work with the code, little snippets of code uh, directly, and play around with it in the light table IDE, which is a new IDE that's being developed by Chris Granger, and it's something that's new and kind of fun to play around with. So let's go over to GitHub and take a look at this closure cone code itself. Um, what we can do is just uh, go to github closure cone or functional cones yeah closure cones so here's the code um, we can browse around to the actual closure cone files and yeah we see there's like 20 files in here so what I'm thinking is uh, just dive into one and we can go from there and maybe have some more videos going through each one. It might start out a little bit slow as we cover the basics, but it gets a lot more interesting uh, pretty quickly. So let's take a look at Lighttable. This is the Lighttable uh, website. You can click to download it for your own platform. Um, I've got it running already, and then you edit code in your browser. And the cool thing about this is that it is able to evaluate your code. Whatever code you write on the left side, it's, it can evaluate each of the expressions on the right side. So you kind of get some fast feedback uh, when you're making your code changes. So if I change something over here on the left, it immediately takes effect and gets calculated on the right. So that, that fast feedback is pretty cool. So what I want to do here is let's just copy over the first uh, the first file, the first cones. And I don't intend to actually run it, like the meditations function. Let's just let's just look at the expressions that are contained within. So we've got a lot of little uh, tests. They're basically equalities. And our job is to fill in the blank such that the equalities hold true. Um, and we'll just go from there. We'll just start with this one. So uh, maybe we should mention a couple things about closure first. I don't know how much background you have with it, but closure is a Lisp, and the Lisp family of programming languages uh, deals a lot with <laughs> expressions in parentheses called S expressions, like that. So um, you may have seen from other programming languages how functions are called like this and whereas with a lisp like closure the parentheses go on the outside so the parentheses represent a list and the first element of the list is the function name the function that you're trying to call um, so maybe that's enough to get us started here what we can see here is uh, it's calling the equals function, which seems to be testing whether the two parameters are equal to one another. Now, uh, to make this pass, it looks like what is equal to true? Well, it looks like true is equal to true. Ah, there you see, this one passed. Good, so we've made some progress. Now, let's look at some more. So the next one is having this expression plus one and one. Well, like, like we saw before, plus is the function that we're calling, and we're passing parameters 1 and 1. So this is returning, this should re evaluate to 
the number two. So let's test that. Let's see if that becomes two. Are these equal? And yeah, that's true. Okay, so what else are we learning here? Um, you can test the equality of many things. So the equals function can take more than two parameters. In this case, we've got uh, one, two, and three expressions here. So let's see what we need to do to make these equal. Plus three and four, that should evaluate to seven. So let's just put in a seven here. And then plus two and blank equals seven. That would be five. Sure enough, that's passing. Okay, we're making good progress. Um, now what about this one? We've got two and then two over one. Well, um, turns out that closure has a first class representation or syntax for rational numbers. So this two slash one is representing the, the ratio two over one. Um, I'm not sure you could put many things in here. You could put two in here. Um, but uh, just as an example, let's put four over two. Turns out that's, that's the same thing. That's all equivalent to uh, two over one, four over two, two. It's all, it's all equivalent. Okay, so that's kind of interesting to learn. What else? Uh, looks like there's a problem here. Two and 2.0. So apparently these are not equal. This is this is false. Okay. So what's going on here? I guess because this is an integer and this is a floating point. So you can't just say that they're directly equal. Um, but here we're learning that uh, two equal signs is a looser equality. So 2.0 and 2 is equal to what two over one maybe all of these are equal when we use this looser version uh, of testing equality okay and looks like we have another function available not equal so not equal returns true if the two parameters or all the parameters are not equal okay i guess we could put in anything there Okay, well, there we've knocked out one file. I think I'll stop the video and then we can continue on with the rest. Um, like I said, it's starting out slow, but it should pick up and get really interesting really quickly. Okay, see you on the next one.